You know what? I think I figured it out. In the modern day, Republican, conservative, political party has a real issue accepting predetermined outcomes as well as post-determined outcomes. In 2020, you could have said this is just simply the lunatic from our articles. That's just an issue with him. It's not a rot that seeped to the entire apple. But in 2022, after two distinct incidents with two different conservative political candidates, you just got to admit that the rot has, well, spread to the entire apple. The party is a rotten apple at this point. The bushel, all the apples in the bushel, they're rotten. From the minority leader, Kevin McCarthy, politicizing January 6th. He made it political. And then said Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, made it political. You know, the Speaker of the House told the minority leader of the House present a list of names for the January 6th committee. And he did. And all the names that he presented were not really people who wanted to investigate because they had already made disparaging comments about the need for an investigation. The list of names he presented for the committee were people who were implicated for being either directly or indirectly part of planning January 6th. Republican congressmen who had asked and sought pardons from the White House. That's who he presented. Now, when you're setting up a committee, everyone on the committee at least has to agree to want to work, to discover and investigate and make a determination about what they're going to find when they're investigated on the committee. The people he selected wanted to be destroyers of the committee and any evidence that they might find because they might themselves be implicated. How can you have a committee member who's directly implicated in January 6th sit on the committee to investigate? At some point, he's going to have to recuse himself, right? You would think when it gets to the point where you ask for a pardon, because you thought that the work that you were doing was illegal. That might be sort of kind of a conflict of interest, as they used to say. So he wasn't doing a good thing, Kevin McCarthy. So there's another apple that's rotten in the bushel. predetermined outcomes and accepting predetermined outcomes. You know, there was a debate slash forum that Club 20 put on where Lauren Bolton, the congresswoman, 
was debating her Democratic opponent. And even before the forum slash debate got started, Lauren Boebert decided she wanted to attack the moderator of the forum because apparently the moderator two years previously had announced publicly through her social media platforms that she wasn't supporting Lauren Boebert. She was supporting her opponent at that time. And Lauren Boebert was making a big stink about it before the forum even began, that she shouldn't be the moderator and that you voted and you said this and you did that. This is before the moderator even introduced the candidates. Before she introduced the panelists who would be asking the candidates the questions. The congresswoman went berserk on the stage. Now why do I say you have to be able to accept predetermined outcomes? There's a time and a place for everything. It wasn't the correct time to do that. Lauren Boebert knew who the moderator of the forum was going to be long before she arrived there. So she accepted the invitation of Club 20, the forum that was hosting both candidates. She accepted this knowing who the moderator was already. She knew both candidates did. So if you already accept a predetermined moderator, why would you wait till you get there to chastise the person? Now you say, well, this person is not impartial. They're biased. Well, the moderator or any moderator has a right to freedom of speech. So her detailing who she was supporting two years ago is well within her constitutional right. And what is Lauren Boebert's point? There must be a moderator that supports her or else the moderator is biased? I didn't get it or understand it because it wasn't the correct time to do it. Now, if the moderator had been going, so to speak, and the debate had started, and the moderator was maybe cutting her off and she thought that she wasn't able to complete her sentences, mm -hmm. then that would have been perfect timing to say this is biased because you're biased. But understand, the forum hadn't started. No questions had been asked of either candidate. They hadn't even done introductions. Maybe her husband, who I hear is a very loving and charming individual, especially at night, I hear that at night he's very charming in the household. Maybe her husband was having a rough day and she ended up at the forum in a bad mood. Something was up because it was the weirdest thing ever. Everyone on the stage was in shock. She just went on a tangent. She couldn't contain herself. I can only imagine. And this is not the first time this has happened. But to that extent, I said, wait a minute, this is a predetermined outcome. You knew who the moderator was going to be. You still decided to show up. You didn't let the woman do anything 
to even make the allegation that she was biased against you that night. You were still butthurt about what she posted on social media two years ago and how she didn't support you. And so you went on a tangent. This is who they are. What about post-determined outcomes? Well, the other candidate that I have in mind is Sarah Palin from Alaska. She ran for Congress. Recently, Alaska changed how they wanted to have their voting system. The citizens of Alaska, not George Soros, not me, not their usual favorite targets, the people of Alaska voted for ranked choice voting to be their new system. And it wouldn't have been an issue if Sarah Palin had won. But when she lost, she said the system was rigged. And it was liberals who stole the election. The system is convoluted. It's wacky. It's not designed to help Republicans, is what Senator in Arkansas, what he said. He went so far as to say it might not even be constitutional. So they can't accept post-determined outcomes either when they lose. I said in another video a while back, the elections are only legitimate when they win. They instantaneously become illegitimate when they lose. Now, I don't know about you, but me, I know that you cannot have any kind of working democratic principled nation if people can't accept predetermined outcomes and post-determined outcomes. You have to be able to accept both. And the modern Republican Party can't accept either one. They really can't. It was embarrassing what Lauren Boebert and Sarah Palin did. Completely embarrassing. But that's what the Republican Party is today. Embarrassing. To berate the moderator before the forum even begins. Man, that is embarrassing. To the point where the crowd who had gathered to hear both candidates and their views before the forum even started booed their congresswoman. They're like, this is our ignorant congresswoman? Yeah, that's who you voted for. Hopefully you change that in this year. The district is pretty conservative. But to me, they ought to find a better person. I think each congressional district is represented by 435,000 people. Hundreds of thousands. And that's the best that district in Colorado can do. I think not. In Alaska, they made a better choice. They went with Mary Patola over Sarah Palin. They said, we don't want ignorant Sarah Palin back in governance in our state. And she blamed the voting system. Because the citizens of Alaska wanted nothing to do with her. Again, not wanting to accept post-determined outcomes. But you know who the moderator 
experienced of the form, but you still show up to be ready before the form even begins. You lose me, don't you? When you say it was rigged, convoluted, it's a mess. Because you didn't know. This is what happens when you have bad leadership. The lunatic from my Largo was a bad leader. And he was a rotten apple in the bushel. Sadly now, the entire bushel is rotten to the core. I'm just telling you, that's what we're dealing with. 